so as you know if you watch my last video um i shared a quick little life update so i'll just summarize that again real quick um i am back home i finished my college program january 5th and i still have so much footage from my college program i didn't stop filming so i still have tons more vlogs coming as well as other videos i'm going to start uploading twice a week one video will be vlogs and the other one will be like a help video whether it's through the application process tips through your disney college program or an update of my life back at college and so i'm so excited we have so many great ideas coming for you guys so make sure you stay tuned if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and with that we're gonna get on into this week's video <laughs> All right, so this week's video is all about your first week at the DCP. So I talked with my roommates, and looking back at our Disney College program, there was a lot we didn't know our first week. We thought we'd help you guys out by sharing the stuff that we wish we would have known our first week of our Disney College program. Okay, so for our tips, we decided to split it up into two different categories. Category one is ways to stay entertained during your first week before you go into traditions and before you can get into the parks, because after that, being entertained is easy. Category number two are gonna be tips that can help you throughout the rest of your college program. we have it's super general unpacking get moved in so that includes going to Walmart or Target getting all the stuff unpacking just feel settled in into your apartment and then you can start doing all those fun things like a lot of people do roommate gifts like my roommates did that so that was way fun kind of a like icebreaker and it gets to know you guys your first week is pretty busy with your classes and stuff um, they can be like middle afternoon which kind of makes doing a full day of stuff hard because you have class in the middle of it so my roommate's biggest thing that we wish we would have done was to go resort hopping because you can easily hop on a bus and go back and forth um, and the resorts are so cool they're detailed just like the theme parks and we wish we would have had a time to check out more of those because as soon as you have your main gate you're gonna spend that time in the park so do it the first week before you get your main gate So the reason I didn't go to Universal my first week was because you have to have a proof of residency to get the Florida discount for your annual pass. You have to have your blue ID to get that proof of residency paper from housing. But when me and Tuesday actually went to Universal the first time, the ticket person didn't even look at our paper. Um, but then when Helen bought it a few a few weeks later, like they did look at hers. So I would honestly risk it and go. And then if they don't give it to you, go to the next employee and see if they can. We'll give it to you without a paper. And if not, then we'll at least try to go enjoy City Walk, which is like their downtown Disney. As for the passes, I definitely think that a Universal Pass is worth it. Um, I have them pulled up right here. The, um, the Florida residency passes for the seasonal pass, which is the one me and Tuesday got. It just has some walkout dates, um, but it was like two weeks in December. I'm not sure for spring, so you'll have to look it up online and see what the blockout dates are for that to see if that one will work for you because it's like the bottom one. Any other higher tiers have less blockout dates. Um, but it was 260 uh for the pass which if you go like three times then that pays for itself so definitely worth it so the preferred pass is the one that rachel got it has zero blockout days and it has parking and that one is 350 so for 100 more dollars you get parking and no blockout days um so if you have a car that one is definitely the best option it's really fun to go to a different park that's not Disney and kind of compare the two and see how much effort Disney really does put into their parks and how detail like matters and makes such a big difference. And Universal is also great because you get the bigger coasters and Harry Potter World is of course amazing. So I highly suggest getting a Universal Pass. Disney Springs is awesome because it really gets you in that Disney mood and gets you pumped to go visit the park. Some of our favorite spots from Disney Springs were Alex and Ani, Blaze Pizza, Sprinkles, and World of Disney. Now we're going to move on to our second category, which are tips that are going to help you throughout the rest of your college program. So our first tip is how to work the bus system. This one was probably the one that caused us the most stress when we first got there because you get this bus schedule, it's this super long pamphlet that folds out and there's all these different times and they're in military time, which we didn't know how to tell military time yet. And it's just kind of confusing, so I'm gonna walk you guys through that. The pamphlet opens up and at the top there's different colors. It tells you what letter the bus is and then along with all the stops that it makes. And then it goes through and it lists the stops in order and then what times it comes. So me 
and Rachel were talking after our program ended, things that we wish we could have done better about our program, and one thing that she brought up is how she wishes she would have written down what her budget was at the beginning of her program and put it on her wall so it was a constant reminder and she felt like she could stick better to that if she saw it all the time, which I completely agree with. Um, you are earning around $10 an hour. Your hours varies by role. I worked probably an average of like 40 hours a week. So what I would do is just put a generic like plan out that you're going to be working like 35 hours at the beginning of your program until you kind of get your first few schedules and get a better feel of how many hours you'll actually be working at your role and then you can adjust your budget. So when I was talking to my roommates, uh, we all wish that we would have started on our bucket list things sooner. And what we kind of came up with that would have helped us with that is, again, if we would have written it all down and put it where we could see it and be a constant reminder. Um, and also, like, make sure every time you go out that you're doing something on your bucket list because time goes by so fast. One of ours that we put off to the very end was Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. And in Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, you get these little cards from the fire station and you can go around and interact with like windows throughout the park. So like that's something easy to do like in the middle of the afternoon when crowds are high and lines are a little bit longer. So by seeing your bucket list, you'll be able to know which things you want to cross off and you can plan out your days a little bit better to make sure you get all of that done. I hope this video helped you guys. Comment down below if it did. If you have any questions, comment down below and I'll get back to you. I just want to take a moment and let you guys know that I am so grateful for you guys for subscribing and joining me and my roommates on our journey. You guys have only seen a fourth of my program, which is crazy. Like, you're only a month in video-wise, and just, I really grew a lot during my program, and I created some awesome friendships. I love my roommates so much, and you, I, and I'm so excited for you guys to get to experience all those adventures with us and watch us grow throughout our program. So make sure you stay tuned, subscribe now if you haven't, if you are. Thank you so much for joining the tea party and we'll see you next time. Bye!